Hey everybody, it's Matt Shu from Upright Health. In this video, we're going to be talking about success rates and satisfaction rates of arthroscopic surgery for femoral acetabular impingement. If you've been told you have FAI and that FAI is the reason you have hip pain, you may have been told that you need to get surgery and that surgery has an extremely high chance of giving you your life back. You may have been told that there's a 90% chance. I've even heard, I have actually had a client tell me their surgeon said 99% certainty that uh, their hips would be totally better after the surgery. Um, and those sound like fantastic numbers, but it's really important to look at where those numbers are coming from and whether there's any research to back that up. Now, early on, there used to be um, a very strong belief that you could have rates of success that high. More recently, there have been more studies with longer term follow up, and the results are not as good. If you'd like to read about this more in depth, you can go to the link in the description to check out the write up on this. There was a study published in July of 2016 in the Journal of Hip Preservation Surgery called Multi Center Outcomes of Arthroscopic Surgery for Femoral Acetabular Impingement in the Community Hospital Setting. This study looked at 150 people over the course of two years to see how the arthroscopic surgery would help them with their hip problems. They looked at the satisfaction rates and the uh, success rates in terms of what would improve on an objective measurement, which uh, they used the non-arthritic hip score. So it's basically a questionnaire um, that the patients answer and it comes up with a score that tells you how good their hips are. So in terms of satisfaction, um, over the course of two years, what they found was at the end of the two-year follow-up, 64% of the patients who underwent the surgery were satisfied with the result. So that's really important to notice. 64% means two out of three did fine, one out of three not so fine. That's not really fantastic odds. Uh, if you're a gambling man, then you can decide for yourself whether that is a reasonable set of odds for you. It is important to note that satisfaction can be um, influenced by a number of factors, not just in terms of how well they can move, but also whether they thought they had any other options. So if somebody says, hey, this is your only option, you should do it. And if you get some improvement, fantastic, because if you didn't do it, you would see no improvement then you would obviously be satisfied that you at least did something to see some improvement. Um, so this is a really important concept to keep in mind because when you look at the actual improvement rates on the scores in the study, you can see that there's something uh, a little bit funny going on with how results are being interpreted and this is a major, major issue. Looking at the success rates in this study, you can see a major problem in the way success is actually measured. So they used a system called the non-arthritic hip score to determine improvement in the patients. Basically, they ask a number of questions to um, the patients to see you know, how their function has improved from pre-surgery to post-surgery. And it's a 20 question survey that skews to show pretty drastic improvement. If you want to look at how the scores break down and, and why I'm saying this, you can go ahead and look in the description and follow that link so you can actually see the math involved here. It's not that complicated, but it doesn't make sense if I just tell it to you in video. The end result is that uh, they said there was a big improvement in patients, and so this was a success overall. There was an average improvement of 20 points um, for all these patients over the course of two years. The thing is this, that the average starting point um, for patients in this study was basically at a point where they had pain and problems in the mild to moderate range. And at the end of this two year study, after surgery, the average result was people being in the mild range. So essentially people improved slightly. They went from moderate pain to mild pain to just mild pain. So that is not exactly a smashing success. That means you had some slight improvement from moderate to mild and you didn't actually fully resolve people's symptoms. It's true that there is improvement, but does that improvement actually match up to what people are actually hoping for? If you're going into the surgery thinking there's a high chance you're going to get all your hip problems resolved, a study like this, which claims a high rate of success, shows you that what you should actually expect is just a small improvement in your actual um, hip health. And 
if you're okay with just that small improvement, then yes, the surgery has a very high rate of giving you that result. But if you're not okay with that, then you need to think about why the surgery may not actually provide the result that sometimes it is being sold as providing. Definitely check out the blog post that's linked in the description so you can see how the numbers break down and read the study for yourself. And do your due diligence on this. This is a really important piece of information to know if you're considering surgery. So check it out and please remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, share, and comment. And don't forget to subscribe.